My name is Drew. Uh, I'm going to be talking just for like 10 minutes about something that's only 10 minutes worth of talking about, uh, which is quite good. But if there, if you, um, that QR code is where all my slides are and links to resources and other stuff. So if you remember QR codes, that works. Um, it's the first time I've used one. I mean, you can tell I'm, I'm down with new technology. Uh, so I'm talking about. Um, Performance, obviously very, very important topic uh, and something that everybody who works across the whole stack from front end to back end needs to be thinking about. As um, typically, probably most of us bias to the front end, I guess, presuming because you're here. Um, uh, we spend an awful lot of time uh, looking at things like this. Right? So the, um, this is the network tab of, um, uh, in Chrome browser um, console just looking at a typical request and seeing all the resources load in and just looking for where holdups are, why things are rendering slowly, um, or you know, what, um, looking at repaints and all that sort of stuff, and figuring out why a particular page might be performing slowly. Um, but sometimes you're asked to look at a page which is performing badly and you look right up at the top of the, of the um, stack there and you see there's this big blue bar um, which is your initial source document loading and it seems to be taking a, a long time and you look into it and there's this big green thing here that says just waiting right time to first bite just waiting and you think ah bother there's nothing uh, it, there's nothing I can do in the browser that's going to um, uh, going to do anything about that because that time to first bite is basically the, the time it takes to compose the page on your server and start sending it back to the browser. So the browser obviously can't do anything until it's been, uh, until the result has, uh, the response has been um, streamed to it. So what causes those sorts of delays on the server? Well, it could be things like really slow database queries or just like a lot of activity back to a data store, that sort of thing. Templating engines sometimes on a go slow. Uh, if you're doing any synchronous API interactions like logging in via a, uh, a third-party service or something like that. Um, if your cache is completely cold uh, and uh, not primed and there's a load of work that normally goes quickly but for the first time it gets hit, it goes slow. Basically anything that's bottlenecked, so um, if you're doing a lot of I.O. on a slow disk, uh, stuff like that. And then if you're doing things you really shouldn't be doing like sending emails with the user attached or uh, resizing images or things that should be shifted out of process. In order to improve the performance of our page, we need to work out what's causing those delays. Um, and of course, there are loads of server monitoring tools that you can use. Um, things like New Relic, Rollbar, Datadog, <coughs> App Optics, Raygun, Scouts. Anyone use any of these or anything like them? Yeah, and that's great. Problem with these, um, although they do loads of great stuff, um, one downside is if you're debugging something in a browser, you then think, all oh, right, now this is a server issue. I've got to go fire up this other tool. I've got to work it. How does this request that I'm looking at that I know is slow, how does that map to all this data I've got in New Relic? Where, you know, uh, and it's basically it's annoying. What would be really good is if we could get all that information right in our browser, right? That would be great. And, well, I've got good news. That's exactly uh, what server timing is. So um, server timing is a W3C specification. So it's not something crazy that just some browser manufacturers made up. It's something crazy that W3C have made up. Um, it's an HTTP response header. So when the response comes back to your server, server timing is a header that comes back with that that then you can inspect in the browser. And it's basically for sending basic timing information from the server to the browser, and the browser can do something with it. Like in Chrome, it'll show it in DevTools. So what does the, this header look like? Well, it's server-timing. And then you send back a metric. Um, and here I'm sending two metrics. One of them is called DB. Uh, and I'm saying the duration of that is 123 milliseconds. And I'm sending a second one that's TPL. And these are just, name, you know, you just name things wh whatever you need them to be. So this is maybe something to do with the database, maybe something to do with templating. I'm saying that one's 56 milliseconds. Um, and then when you go to the, uh, the page um, in your dev tools and look at the, that initial page load, you can see that great big waiting time to first byte bar that we were looking at before. But now down below it, there's a section called server timing. 
And that includes the information that was sent back in that header. Um, so it has the, the two different timing points. What it won't give you is a waterfall of this happened, then that happened. There's no start and end times. There's just durations. So you'll have lots of different blocks of anything you send back in that header from the server that tells you um, how long each thing took. So you can send back as many things as you like. Um, they're uh, comma separated, so here we'll be sending back three different metrics. And a metric is made up of three possible properties. It always has a, a short name, which is kind of like an identifier. Um, that was the DB in the example we just had. You can, you can send back a duration, which is in milliseconds, which is DUR equals and then the time. Uh, and you can optionally send back a description, so if you want it to look a bit prettier. Um, in your dev tools, then you can send back a description as well. So uh, with the description, it might look a bit like that. So you've got your name, your duration, uh, and your description. So they're separated by uh, semicolons, and then each uh, metric block is separated by commas. So our second one might look like that. And then altogether, if we were sending two fully, fully sort of uh, full metrics with our header, it would look like that all in one line. Then when you inspect that in the browser, you can see down here, hopefully you can see it's a little bit small, that now we've got our nice descriptions, database and template processing rather than the short IDs that we passed in. Now you don't actually have to send a duration. You can just send back um, uh, something like a, a, a name, or you can just send a name. Um, here we're sending a name and a description to say, you know, oh, this, this page was generated from this data center or whatever. So if there's additional information you want to communicate back into DevTools, you can do it that way. Um, and you can see uh, down at the bottom here, there's that East Coast data center pops up. And it doesn't have any timing, because it doesn't have any timing. But it's information that's there. It's useful for, for debugging. OK, so how might we use that? This is, we're going to get into some server-side code. Is everybody braced? Everybody ready? It's OK. It's JavaScript. <laughs> Um, so there's a, a, an NPM package uh, called server timing, conveniently. Uh, and so I've been using that uh, with Express. So here's a really basic Express thing. I'm start, um, uh, including Express, including server timing, uh, creating a new app. And then for my app, I'm saying use server timing to add it in. And then I've got this really basic um, route here for the home page. Uh, of my site, and it looks like that expanded out. So if we're going to do something that takes a, a, a lot of time, where better to do it than in a GET request to our home page, right? You know, where, where best to do this expensive operation? So what sort of expensive operation could we do? Let's say we wanted to paint the whole world with a rainbow. Uh, that would take a long time, right? So we're going to make our paint the whole world with a rainbow method call. Um, and we want to make sure that we want to test to see whether that's you know, taking a long time, taking a short time. We want to get that information into our browser. Um, so we're going to do that by just uh, at the beginning, we'll create a variable called start, stick the current timestamp into it. Then we'll do our paint the whole world with a rainbow. Um, and then we're, do, we're going to um, call set metric, which is part, part, a method of the server timing um, uh, module that we added. So we're going to give it the three values, uh, paint, being our, our name for it. Then we're doing um, the current timestamp and take off the timestamp that we first thought of, uh, which gives us our duration. Um, and then we'll give it a, a nice name. Um, obviously, I would have thought typically in, in a standard um, application, it might be a little bit more complex than that. Maybe if we're thinking about asynchronous stuff or whatever. But in the very, um, the very simplest case, we're, we're timing some stuff and we're calling set metric. Um, Say we wanted to do another, another operation then. What if we wanted to email um, Björk? You know, Iceland's pint-sized songstress. Don't be ashamed, we've all done it. If you wanted to email Björk every time your home page was requested, you could again set another timestamp, then call your email Björk uh, method. Uh, and then um, just again call set, uh, set metric, we're going to call this one email, do the same thing. If I load that up then in my browser and see that the, the response header that was sent back, I can see, yeah, there's paint. There's my um, Björk thing, which I think I called email. That's a typo. Uh, and then this particular module has added a third item that we didn't explicitly um, declare called total. 
and that's giving us the total process time from the point it was instantiated to the point it's generating the header. Uh, and that's quite useful. So if we look at that in the browser, there are those three things. What's quite interesting, because it's given us that total response time, we can see that that's actually different um, from the time that the uh, browser think the thinks the request took, which gives us a little bit of insight into the overhead of the framework and the overhead of the server response time, which we can see is pretty quick uh, with Express running on a local machine as it was. But it's uh, another interesting metric. So that, that's it. <coughs> what are the considerations when using it? Um, you might want to keep the names and descriptions nice and compact. I mean, it's not a big deal, but they are going into an HTTP header, and it's good to keep those headers as small as possible uh, where you can. Uh, let's keep them shortish. I did uh, try um, uh, non-ASCII characters in naming things, um, particularly the, the O with the umlauts in Björk. Uh, that didn't work well, so keep it ASCII. Um, <laughs> Don't expose anything secret or sensitive, obviously, because it can, it can, it's just in the header, it can be read. And if you, it, it is such that you can just switch it on on a production server. You can start sending these headers back because they're pretty small. They're not going to you know, be generally visible unless somebody knows to look for them. Um, so it's the sort of thing that if you are debugging something in a pressured scenario, you can get away with that. Um, but just be aware that it's not you know, it's not secure. Um, it is just being put out with every request. Um, and probably the most expensive thing with doing this is all the timing points in your app. So if you're putting lots of timing in to be able to see where things are going slow, you want to have some way of turning that off because that's probably going to be the biggest performance overhead. Um, uh, if you have that running on every request, you want to be able to switch it off. So uh, generally, I think it's good. I've been using it on uh, my app noticed. Um, just, I just have it running all the time on a few key things, and then I have other bits I can switch on and off. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, it's been useful. If you want to find out more, you can um, go to MDN Docs um, and search for server timing, and there's a really great article there about it. Um, and you can find uh, the slides and uh, links to more information and all sorts of stuff on uh, noticed slash Um And thank you very much.